here with jockey Ben Curtis riding Anna Marie in the Kentucky Derby and uh, what a whirlwind you just started riding in the States in what November in November came over the start of November yeah so it's um it's all happened pretty fast so fantastic winter at the fairgrounds uh, how many races did you win down there um 40 I think 43 or 44 um so we we had a really good meet down there it obviously took us a while to get going um but once we hit full stride the second half of the meet um we really kind of hit the ground running then and um, finished it out great so we couldn't have asked for for a better way to start to be honest yeah that's amazing and then to pick up a derby mount when did you uh kind of hook up with honor marie and wit uh, well I, I hooked up with wit early doors during the fairgrounds meet i was raising a lot of horses for him um and then um other jockeys had kind of different commitments on the day that honor marie was running in the louisiana derby and um my agent's been friends with wit for a long time i raised a lot of horses for him um and you know it just seemed to fit at the time and um yeah, I think, you know, I think it was a pretty good fit on the day. He's a horse who kind of suits me. He's very chilled out and laid back, got a bit of character. Um, that's, that's the type of horse you want to ride. So, um, yeah, I was delighted to get the mount on him. And you've, you've ridden in big races overseas, uh, Royal Ascot, 20, 30 horse fields. So this is nothing new for you, right? No, it won't be anything new. You know, a lot of the um, UK racing, especially on the big Saturdays, you know, the, the big handicaps, um, you can get full fields of 20 to 30 horses. So, um, you know, I'm kind of well adapted to that. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So with US racing in, in, a, in a dirt race with this many horses, is it a little different when you get back a field, there's so much dirt thrown around. It's a little different than riding in the turf, isn't it? It is different riding to the turf, but I think you acclimatize to um, the situations you're in. And, you know, I, like, like you said, I had a lot of rides in the fairgrounds. Um, I've had a few rides here through the, through the week on the track. And um, yeah, you definitely learn to acclimatize to the dirt coming back. Um, you just put on a few, few extra pairs of goggles, make sure you can see where you're going. And um, yeah, he is a horse that likes to come, come from behind. So he will be getting some of that kick back early doors, but hopefully we can get a smooth passage then from kind of the bottom of the back stretch round in, into this into the straight great and and how do you prepare for something like the derby have you watched some old, old you know old races and kind of seen how things go or how it goes for the closers or what's your thoughts there yeah obviously i've done my homework um you know i've always tried to watch since i got into racing i've always watched the the kentucky derby i've always said it's like any of the big races i'll always tune in for the melbourne cup kentucky derby royal ascot you know if i'm not riding there um you know they're, they're the big races you know that the, the big Japanese um, big Japanese races that come on now, you know, they're all on at like two in the morning for us, but I always set the alarm and, and try and watch them. But um, I've obviously gone back, watched replays of the of the previous derbies um, and also done my homework into the horses and the, the competition we're up against. And, you know, it's this horse is going to be fairly far back, right? Is it closer? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that, that seems to be his, his running style. Um, but he doesn't have to be fair, he just wherever he's in his comfort zone. So mm -hmm. wherever that puts him, you know, if, if they're going very quick on the front end, you probably see him further back. But yeah. um, it'll all be relative to the way the race is ran. And um, I'll just put him wherever he's happy and comfortable. And um, yeah, and then we'll take it from there. When you're in the back of a pack in a large field like that, how do you balance, uh, you know, getting a clean trip on the inside or something versus I don't want to get stopped and you know, and it's tougher if you are the favorite, you know, you're, you're not on the favorite in this case, but you know, how does a rider balance something like that? I think you have to take everything as it comes, you know, um, anything can happen once the gates open. You can have the best plan in the world and, and think you know where everyone's gonna be. And then two miss the break, one gets a bump coming out the gates and the whole dynamic of the race changes. So you have to play it by ear. I don't think you can panic. Um, you have to have faith in your own judgment. You know, if, if they're going quick, you have to have the, the confidence to be able to take your time, pick your spots, and if they're going steady, you know, to try and make that little bit of ground um, earlier than earlier than you probably would. So, um, I think it's just having this, the awareness around you, both on pace and um, spatial awareness to where you are and um, what's happening in front of you. And have you talked it over with Wit yet, or are you guys going to wait till later in the week? Oh, we've had a good few chats about about it, but you know, it, um, things are always developing. Um, you know, the late scratch yesterday and. You know, things will change all the way up to race race day. So um, he is, obviously he is a hold up horse, but he is an uncomplicated horse. You know, he he's not a hard puller. He doesn't he doesn't like to be hard on himself. So um, it's very much a case of just trying to get a spot where, um, where we're comfortable and the horse is comfortable. All right, well, good luck. Thank you very much.